In Africa, like everywhere, human activities are increasing the concentration of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. In international climate change negotiations, countries have agreed to monitor their greenhouse gas emissions and find solutions to limit them. While transportation and industrial activities are the most well-known sources of emissions, agriculture, forestry, and land use change activities are also responsible for 24% of greenhouse gas emissions. However, some agricultural practices may also limit the concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere by storing carbon in soils. Good management and sustainable agricultural practices on smallholder farms represent a large potential for greenhouse gas mitigation. It is therefore necessary to know how to quantify soil carbon stocks and monitor them over time, as soil carbon stocks are highly variable. Gustavo Saiz, a soil scientist from Imperial College London, collaborating with CCAFs and IRD, joined Professor Vincent Logan and his team from Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology to measure soil carbon stocks in a typical smallholder farming system in Ghana. They are preparing to go to the field to sample soils to determine their carbon content. To identify suitable locations for sampling soils on selected smallholder farms, the first step is to categorize the field types. Field types are classified according to estimated soil organic carbon stocks. In smallholder agriculture, gardens and fields close to the household receive more frequent applications of soil amendments and thus tend to have higher soil carbon stocks than more distant fields. All field types are sampled in the center of a representative plot. Distance from the homestead does not explain all carbon stock variability. Soils under perennial vegetation are often richer in carbon than soils cultivated with annual crops. If both perennial and annual vegetation are found in the same field type, and the area of the smaller field is at least half the size of the larger field, then soil samples must be taken in both fields. Scientists should first attain the necessary authorization from local authorities and smallholders to conduct research. Then work may begin. The scientists first label the auger for three different soil depth intervals, 0 to 10, 10 to 30, and 30 to 50 centimeters. As soil organic carbon is inherently heterogeneous, it is recommended that at least four sampling locations are chosen at each spatially representative field type. The sampling location is identified by its GPS coordinates. Vegetation and land use are also recorded. After clearing the soil surface, scientists use an auger to take samples at each of the predefined depths. The scientists will thus measure the soil carbon content on these samples at each depth. Bulk density must be determined at each soil depth. To do this, different tools are used to take soil samples at specific volumes. The method shown here uses cylinders with specific volumes taken from a pit that has been dug in the soil. This is highly labor-intensive. If available, the use of a soil corer is recommended, providing the soil is not too stony. By using a soil corer, bulk density can be determined at the same time as samples are extracted for analysis. It is important that all of the soil in the cylinder is placed into one carefully labeled bag.
The scientists return to the lab at Kwame Nkrumah University, where they dry the samples to a constant weight. Large clumps are progressively broken by hand during the drying period. The dried soils are sieved to two millimeters. Then an aliquot of the sieved soil is powdered. The powdered soil is transferred into a small capsule of a few hundred milligrams and weighed. The capsule is then sealed for analysis. Soil carbon content is expressed in milligrams of carbon per gram of soil. It is determined by measuring the amount of carbon dioxide emitted from total combustion of the sample. To calculate the carbon stocks of each sampling location in the field, the measured carbon concentration must be multiplied by the soil bulk density. Bulk density is expressed in grams per cubic centimeter. Soil samples for bulk density are dried in an oven at 105 degrees Celsius and then weighed. Gravel and root content greater than two millimeters in diameter will be weighed separately. After carbon content and bulk density are recorded, soil carbon stock can be calculated using the following formula. Soil carbon stock is calculated by multiplying soil bulk density by the concentration of organic carbon in the soil, by the soil depth interval, by the calculation of one minus the fractional gravel content divided by 10. Now that all of the carbon stocks in each sampling location have been calculated, a soil carbon map can be developed. Due to the multiple samples taken at each location, the variances of carbon stocks measured is associated with an average. To expand the soil carbon stock map to the landscape scale, the landscape should be stratified either through ancillary data, which is recommended, or geographic coordinates. It is recommended that scientists use ancillary variables that affect soil carbon stocks, including soil classification, topographic position, and land use. Potential sampling strata are then defined by overlapping the different variables. The number of plots required to estimate soil organic carbon stocks in each field type depends on the desired precision of the estimates. Stratification of the area by ancillary variables is recommended, though the number of points can become impractical to sample in a highly heterogeneous environment. Spatially stratified systemic sampling of the landscape through geographic coordinates may be a cost-effective option. In this method, spatially dispersed clusters are chosen from a gridded landscape map. Within each cluster, the number of sampling locations will be determined by the precision of estimates needed. Mapping soil carbon stocks in rural areas in various soil and climatic contexts will provide accurate and reliable data to national greenhouse gas inventories for agricultural systems. These data can also help identify and promote low emission development practices that sequester carbon in soils and thus help meet national and global climate change mitigation goals.